Hello, and welcome to Partially Redacted, a podcast where we discuss privacy and security engineering and related topics. I'm your host, Sean Falconer, and today I'm joined by Nick Hodges, developer advocate at Passage, and we'll be talking about passwordless authentication. Nick, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Sean. I'm really glad to be here. So we met through the Common Room community, and we started talking about passwordless authentication, which made me very excited to have you on the show. You know, passwords are often, I think, a weak point for a security system. You can have all the security in the world, but if your password gets compromised, you know, you got problems. So, Mm -hmm. but before we get to that, why don't we have you first, uh, you know, introduce yourself. Who are you? You know, what's your educational background, work history, and how did you end up where you are today? Sure. Uh, My name is Nick Hodges. I'm the developer advocate at Passage. We do passwordless authentication for the web and mobile applications. Um, I uh, was well over-educated at Carleton College in classical languages. And uh, I've been a a long way, let's see, I've been a math, uh, not a math, I'm sorry, a Latin teacher, taught high school Latin, became a naval officer, been a consultant, a software developer, software development manager. And uh, all along the way, I uh, was doing blogging and attending conferences and doing all that fun stuff. And then a couple of years ago, uh, I figured out that I could get paid to do that as a developer advocate. So, you know, why not? I really enjoy it. And it's a it's a great career, I think. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, as someone who's worked in uh, myself in developer relations for a long time, I totally agree. And I think it's very consistent to have this kind of eclectic background for someone who finds their way into developer advocacy, whether that's, you know, starting as an engineer or starting completely in a uh, field unrelated to engineering and then later finds it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first off, just to kind of set the tone here, what's the problem with passwords and why are you a password hater? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, passwords, the the basic problem with passwords is they're very compromisable. Um, It's very easy for well, I shouldn't say very easy, but it's entirely possible for you to uh, give up your password without re- necessarily realizing it through a phishing uh, expedition by a, a nefarious actor. Um, passwords are once compromised uh, can be secretly used. You don't even know you've been compromised. All different kinds of things can happen, and eighty uh, percent of all security incidents out there, or over eighty percent actually, uh, are result from somebody's compromised password, somebody giving their passwords up against, uh, you know, to someone. Uh, geez, there's even been people who've had the pictures on the internet with their password, you know, on a yellow sticky on their, on their uh, monitor, things like that. So passwords are just a very large vulnerable point in the uh, uh, security uh, process. And uh, I've hated them. The reason I've hated them, I shouldn't say hate them, but, you know, I'm irritated by them is uh, they're difficult to manage. You know, they, everybody has a different rule. Some people want your password to be at least 12 characters. Other places want your password to be no more than 12 characters. You got to have a number, a capital letter. You got to memorize them all. And then you think, oh, this is a big deal. I can't remember them all. I'm going to write them down. And then you write them down. And who knows what happens after that? And then you think, oh, I'll do as a password manager. And those are great, you know, like one password or something. Those work really well, but a lot of times they can be complex. Like my dad, I tried to get him to use one password, but he just, it didn't work for him, you know, because he couldn't figure that out. And so it's just, there's all kinds of hassle around them. Uh, the user experience with them is really bad and they're insecure. Right. Yeah. And I can remember, you know, you talking about the seeing a picture of someone, you know, with their password written on a sticky note. I can even remember in my early parts of my career while I was still in university in the early 2000s, being at, you know, early days of sort of dot com boom with uh, people's computers with their passwords, you know, on sticky notes, basically right on the screen and so on. But passwords have been around for a long time, it's basically 60 years. Why do you think that passwords have stuck around so long, just despite like the, the sort of inherent problems with them? Well, I think, you know, they've been around for a long time. Uh, because they were, you know, invented a while ago, and for many years they worked just fine, particularly when uh, there was no connectivity between computers. And of course, the internet started connecting up all the computers in the world, and all of us getting uh, uh, accounts on different websites and servers and all kinds of systems all around. Um, people started figuring out ways to get you to release the password, and uh, because the, of the remoteness of a password. Um, I think it becomes much more of a target. Um, you know, 
40 years ago, your password, uh, if somebody knew your password, the worst thing that could happen would be, you know, somebody could walk into a computer lab and log on to a computer that they might or might not even have access to physically. Whereas now, uh, you know, we've got robots going around stealing people, scraping passwords and stealing people's passwords and then using automated attacks to do all kinds of nefarious things that can occur outside there. But I think the reason they've stuck around is there hasn't been an alternative. You know, it's been the best thing that we've had. We've added multi-factor authentication to those and that has helped to a large degree. But even then, it's there. It's still people can fi have, fig you know, hackers have figured out ways, bad, bad actor hackers have figured out ways to even get you to give up your multi-factor authentication numbers. So that that uh, is a, a, you know, it has proven to be a very challenging problem, but recently uh, it's been solved. Right. And, and I definitely want to get into that. The, you know, one of the things that you um, mentioned there was the you know, things like 2FA. And there's been a lot of other, I think, attempts to make passwords more secure, longer lengths, you know, no dictionary words, special characters, things that basically make it impossible for, you know, my mom to remember these things. So she has to write them down on a notepad, just like you were talking about with your dad. Right, so, right. you know, obviously there's security concerns with writing something down on a piece of paper, but why haven't these additional attempts at, you know, longer passwords, more complicated schemes and so on, those attempts at security, why haven't those things worked? I think it's just, it's challenging for the end user to remember a complex password. Um, many of the passwords require things like capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. And uh, there's a famous, I, I want to always say this wrong, XKCD um, cartoon that shows that actually the some of the best passwords uh, are, you know, f long phrases or even just four different words mushed together four different dictionary words mushed together that make uh, up a good password. And But ultimately, even if you do have good password hygiene, if you will, and uh, are very, very careful with your passwords, it's still possible for them to be compromised through one, you know, one boneheaded error. I mean, I'll confess, I've clicked on links that I know that I shouldn't have. Um, you know, uh, uh, recently I've gotten a, uh, a text, quote unquote, from my CEO asking me for something. And I actually recently, just as a side note, I said, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to help. You know, what can I do? And the guy wanted me to go buy uh, eBay pa eBay gift cards. Um, and I took him all the way through the whole thing. said, yeah, I'm here at the store and everything like that. And it was pretty funny. And he was mad at the end. He said <laughs> he used some obscenities when he figured out I was not going to actually send him the code. Yeah, I got the exact same text message for, allegedly from my uh, CEO as well. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, just a warning to anybody that's listening, that scam is out there. Yes. Um, so there's been this kind of, I think, you know, new world or, or new type of technology that is starting to create, you know, some buzz in the world, which is this idea of going passwordless. So what's it actually mm -hmm. mean to go passwordless as a consumer or a business? Um. Well, I mean, the bottom line is uh, passwordless authentication allows you to register and authenticate users without a password at all. Um, you can uh, type in just an identifier, usually a, a email and a uh, or and or I'm sorry, an email or a phone number, and uh, you can then register your account based on that. Um, and the way you identify yourself is normally through biometrics of some sort, face ID, a fingerprint, um, voice ID is possible. Um, Windows Hello uses a PIN. Some other uh, the systems use a PIN, which never in that inform you know the, which never leaves the device. And uh, once those two things are put together, uh, it can uniquely identify you. And it uses a, a, a protocol. Thank you, uh, called Web Authn that uh, enables uh, you to do that without revealing any secrets, to authenticate without revealing any secrets. Right now, the way it generally works is the password actually goes out and the server holds on to that password, or at least a hash of it if they're good. They should be only doing a hash with some salt. But with the web authen system and the passwordless system, um, no secret information leaves your phone. So that, uh, that is a much more secure system. Mm -hmm. So... 
this, you know, essentially this is pass key is being generated, right. As part of that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, for a phone, that pass key is stored in like the trusted platform module of the phone. What happens mm -hmm. if someone steals the phone? Can they get access to the password then? Or, and does the person essentially need to invalidate all their passwords at that point? No, if your phone gets stolen, the TPM is designed in such a way that it is basically unhackable, as I understand it. Um, maybe the NSA or somebody like that uh, could could figure it out. I know, but a uh, even the most sophisticated. My understanding is that, uh, I'm not a crypt. I'm not a uh, electronic engineer, and uh, all that. But my understanding is that even uh, the most sophisticated hackers couldn't get your pass keys out of your phone. If you had, if you had, you know, if they had your mm -hmm. phone physically. And then what happens in the case that someone like, you know, switches devices, upgrades their device, do the pass keys come with them? Well, that's a, that's kind of a two-sided answer. Strictly speaking, they do not. The strict reading of the uh, WebAuthn protocol says that the uh, information is stored solely upon the phone or the computer, the laptop, whatever. But, um, there's been a, uh, when Apple released their passkey solution, they slightly, I shouldn't say modify the protocol, they implemented the protocol in such a way that they can actually share those uh, passkeys between devices in the Apple ecosystem using, pa uh, using the iCloud uh, in a completely secure way. But uh, 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 those, uh, those solutions allow the, devices to share the information. And uh, uh, Microsoft and Google are both working on a similar solution. Now, uh, it's not known at this time if there's going to be a way for, say, Microsoft to share their passkey solutions with a uh, Apple, you know, the Apple ecosystem. Will there be a central location or things like that? But uh, that's kind of the basic idea behind that. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh uh, hopefully, we you know we were able to move to a world where someone can seamlessly move between Android and iPhone. But I don't know. There, there's already challenges just with moving your your you know do your text messages between those platforms. So uh, I might right. not have to hold up yeah. hope for past keys. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you lose your phone, the information is stored out in the cloud in mm -hmm. theory. You know, and uh, you'd be able to get those right back. What are some of the potential security risks or limitations of, pass key, of a passkey-based login? Well, that's an interesting question. The short answer is nobody knows yet. The, the, the longer answer is, well, I guess this is you know, another short answer is, it's really, really, really secure. It's very hard right now to conceive of a way to hack a passkey based solution. Um, you know, you can think of scenarios where coercion is involved. Somebody's grabbing your thumb and putting it on your phone if they kidnap you. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you kidnapped, you've got worse problems. But I don't know. It, currently, right now, nobody can conceive of a way to fish mm -hmm. it, to use phishing solutions, for instance. As I said, the system doesn't allow for you to share your password with somebody else, even if you wanted to, unless you're using something, uh, well, Apple's, Apple's implementation actually uh, allows you to share a passkey with someone in close proximity to you via airdrop. But uh, uh, basically the, a fisher hacker, you know, hacker trying to fish your password, you couldn't even give it to them if you tried, if you wanted to, because mm -hmm. it's just locked to that phone. It's locked to the specific website. So if somebody directs you to another website, your passkey will not be uh, given over to that website because each individual website has its own passkey and each domain has its own passkey and won't we'll, we'll serve up that passkey to another domain. Right. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, some of the, one of the things that we talked about earlier was, you know, in the sort of non fully networked world, the, the passwords were relatively safe because the worst that someone could get is they did get your passwords. They actually have to like log into your terminal or maybe they log into like an internet somewhere. And then mm -hmm. what ended up happening with using passwords in a network world is we have this huge like scale problem where if a password gets compromised, essentially now that person can do that from anywhere in the world. They don't have to be right beside you or, you know, be in your home or anything like that. And they can essentially get access to your identification, do all kinds of terrible things. But with the pass key, 
technology, we're kind of bringing it back to the world where if there was a compromise, that person has to most likely be physically present with you, which reduced, yes. significantly reduces like the scale of that potential issue. Yeah, sure. So if you view, like, if you view the, the way I look at it, the way I picture it in my mind is if you view the threat surface of a password, it's like Lake Superior. And the threat surface of a pass key or a web authentic solution, you know, a passwordless solution is like a small puddle after a rain. You know, it's just very, very small and a very, very much stronger system than the uh, password based system. Hey, it's Sean, host of the show you're listening to. First and foremost, I hope you're enjoying the interview. And if you are, please support the show by subscribing and leaving a positive rating and review. And if you want to keep the conversation going, join our community at skyflow.com slash community. Okay, that's it for me. Now back to the show. The these you know examples that you've been giving sound like it's been it's you know mostly tied to your phone. So you're either you know thumbing on the phone or maybe it's you know your mm-hmm. your face uh, recognition, facial recognition on the phone. But what if you don't have your phone? Can you still log into uh, a you know a pass key based or a passwordless authentication solution? Yeah, sure. Like if you sit down at a library computer and want to log into a site, uh, normally the, the way it would work with a pass you know passwordless solution would be this system. You you'd type in your identifier, your email, and the email would say, the the system would say, hey, I don't recognize this device you're on. Would you like to register it? And uh, they say, and you'd say, yes, I would. Or maybe you would say no, much like you don't check that little box that says, are you on a public computer? But then the system could send you a uh, magic link, which is a one-time login password link that usually expires in a very short period of time. It expires immediately upon use, which, you know, and uh, that can log you in. And then they can ask you, at that point, the system will ask you, um, uh, do you want to register this device? I use it a new laptop that you just bought, or you want to say no, I don't, because it's a laptop at the or it's a computer at the library or whatever, and uh, and the system can then uh, log you in but not register your device, or it can log you in and register the device if you if you want that. Um, that's that's the way we do it at Passage. We we default back to a magic link. We don't have passwords anywhere in our system at all as a fallback. I see. And then what about when a business like switches over from you know, historic password-based system to this like pass key or passwordless approach. What is the general reaction to their their customers? Does this feel like you know something very foreign, or is this like a natural progression for people? I think it's a natural progression. I mean, uh, you know, when I demo this and I I uh, point people to our demo site, and they can register and log in in literally less than 30 seconds with nothing more than a couple of touches on their phone. They like that. People really like that. I remember the feeling I had when I first, my, you know, on my phone when uh, uh, my online bank had the login with the thumb. And I thought, oh, this is so great. Instead of t-, you know, Because with my bank, I'm usually very careful about the password, right? Use a unique password, make sure 100% not using it anywhere else, make sure it's got all the bells and whistles. And who wants to type that in on that little, you know, a, a keypad on your phone and so just touching your thumb and logging in was just brilliant really really brilliant yeah it seems like especially in the financial sector there's a lot more use with these apps like certainly like you know i i use the chase app for example or you know uh, investment uh apps like Wealthfront. they're all sort of thumbprint but there is also a password mechanism so they haven't fully switched over to a passwordless approach and right you know why do you think that is is that just because they had that legacy system, so they need to still support some form of users that maybe aren't logging in directly from their phone? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, it's a couple of reasons. One is uh, uh, it, the one you mentioned, that there's a legacy system and people still have passwords. And two, I think that uh, passwordless is new enough that a uh, institution like a bank hasn't moved quickly as quickly towards... Uh, implementing the web authent, you know, protocol or using a tool like ours that does do that for you. Um, and, uh, uh, but I think you'll see that. I think banks will eventually realize that having a password can be very costly and uh, having a password-based system, even if it's the fallback, you know, a f- fallback password is just as vulnerable as a regular, pa- as, you know, as a primary password. 
And so I think uh, 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 institutions like banks will probably be amongst the, you know, first to realize this because there is money at stake quite literally. Right. So. Yeah. Nothing uh, sort of motivates a product roadmap like, <laughs> like revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we talked a little bit about with his like traditional passwords, using things like a password manager, it's a bit of an educational hurdle for certain consumers. But I think for password lists, like you were mentioning, consumers, they, you know, they get it. They, if they're asked to thumb in, like it's not that complicated. But what about on the mm-hmm. business side? Like, is this something that there is an educational hurdle to kind of educate the market of businesses that this is a better approach and that they should ditch passwords? Well, you, yeah, you just described my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that that there is a uh a, a, a need to educate people. Um uh one of the things I run up against, you know, just in in trying to educate developers is that they don't even know that this exists, that this protocol exists, that this solution exists. Um and so just educating people about the existence of a password solution is really a big step forward. And as I said, I, I literally never had anybody go, you know, run the demo on their phone with me standing there going, uh, you know, this isn't very nice. I, I don't like how this works. I'm going to stick with passwords. I mean, everybody loves the notion of just touching your thumb and logging in. And, and, it, and they like it for their users too. You know, the, the nice thing about it too is that, you know, the typical user registration flow of like type in, uh, your, you know, your email, type in a password, retype the password, Oh, it's not strong enough. Oh, it doesn't agree. Password must be this long. Must have this, that, and the other thing. Oh, let me go get you know my uh, password manager to generate one for me. And then yes, I want to click on it. And oh, you're sending me a text with a six-digit code. That all goes away. You know, you register. You type in your name. You click on it. It asks, do you want to register the device? Yes. Boom. You're in. Then you log in, touch the phone, and you're done. Right. Yeah. Very very. Much less friction for your users, mm-hmm. yeah. for people's users. Yeah. Probably nothing makes me more angry in this world than trying to struggle with like resetting my password through some obscure, mm-hmm. like strange, uh, super strict password uh, scheme. Yep, yep. You know, I imagine like as engineers, this is something engineers probably would love to ditch passwords and having to deal with, you know, the kind of long tail of of death by a thousand cut type of features that you have to build and security concerns that Mm -hmm. you have to be thinking through. Like Mm -hmm. even over the last five to 10 years, you know, authentication as a service, uh, you know, through companies like um, Okta and Auth0 and so on have Mm -hmm. had a lot Mm -hmm. of success with, because the, the, you know, I think eventually the engineering community realized that it doesn't make sense for me to build, you know, authentication for the 10th time and deal with password recovery magic links, all these types of things that you need to think through. Um, and this is just, a, feels like another step in terms of removing friction and making it super simple. Yeah. The, uh, uh, there is a lot of comp- one, one of our main competitions in this world in, you know, in this, as any developer tool really is the notion that developer says, well, I could build that myself. That's always one of the number one competitors. But I think people are starting to realize that services, you know, software as a service is a real thing. Uh, services like what we do or Auth0, some of our other competitors do, uh, is is a real solid solution and a cost-effective solution towards providing a very critical and empo- important business function of a we- of a of a you know website-based business or a mobile app-based business. Uh, over the years, as you said, uh, passwords have. You know, authentication has become a critical part of many companies' websites, and they're and indeed a core business solution because, uh, you know, registering a user and having a user gain access to privileges that they have that they've paid for or they want to use themselves, really, really critical to a business's uh, success. And uh, one of the things I find is that uh, actually having developers think they can implement or not think, but actually want to implement things themselves, which they can, of course, they can implement things themselves. But oftentimes, uh, we found too that uh, the implementation is easy, but the maintenance becomes more difficult. And then ensuring you've uh, painted the entire floor and not missed a little spot in the corner, that kind of thing, that of course can lead to a very uh, very uh, disastrous situation if you don't cover every single corner case because the hackers will find those vulnerabilities. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, um, so I think uh, it's important that 
people realize that SaaS is, you know, the SaaS solutions that are out there for this kind of thing are very effective, cost effective. And indeed, you know, we're in the business of providing a safe, secure passwordless system, and most companies are not. And so that for them to have to spend time doing that is time spent not doing their core business themselves. Right. And essentially, I imagine everybody, you know, at, at Passage essentially is waking up thinking about this problem dedicating their time and, and, and you know, their mm-hmm. sort of mental resources to trying to solve this problem. Whereas if you're at a company that's building, I don't know, um, uh, you know, the example I always use is Instapred, essentially, you know, on-demand bread delivery or something like that. Well, then your concerns right. are right. like, how do I deliver bread to people on demand? It's not necessarily, you know, all the things I need to think about through my authentication system. Yeah. And, and you know, we're in the business of making that very, very easy for you to implement and very, very easy to maintain, you know. Um, we like to say that you can actually implement our solution in two lines of code um, in your HTML somewhere. Uh, it's a little more than that, actually. But, you know, the basic idea is that you embed one of our comp- uh, components, you know, our web components, our web elements, into your uh, Angular or Vue or React or HTML anywhere. And uh, the system sets itself up and just pretty much works from that point on. Um, we... Uh, you know, we're completely standard-based. We use JOTs, JWTs, uh, like pretty much everybody else in the world does. And uh, the solution is very simple, very easy for a developer to implement and very worry-free. That's our whole goal, right, is to make it worry-free. Mm-hmm. And then is there, in terms of the integration, is it primarily like a client-side integration or is there also like a server-side component to this? Um it's, it's mainly a client-side implementation that then in turn talks to our servers. We become the authenticating service for a relying party, i.e. a website. Um, and so we can store information about your users uh, if we want that is available to you when you uh, log in, when the, that user logs in. It's available on the client side when the user logs, logs in. Uh, and uh, we're in the process of working on some systems that'll enable you to manage users and manage the processes around users and registering them and, and to become more enterprisey. But basically, yes. Mm-hmm. And then, if I have you know already some representation of my users in in my database, then how does sort of the mapping happen between my internal representation and then whatever you know passage is essentially uh, representing on their end? Is there like a essentially a, an ID or key or representation on the passage side mm-hmm. that I need to store within my database or, or is that managed on the passage side? Yeah, there's, there, there's basically two ways you can approach that. One, you can store everything on our side and we actually have a solution for migrating from your syst- existing system into our system if you want to do mm-hmm. that and store the user information on our side. Or you can simply embed a user ID in the JOT if you want to and then have that user ID show up on the server side and then you can use that user ID to find all the information you want about your user as well. I see. Okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty simple. And then I guess, mm-hmm. you know, for people who have rolled their own authentication, you know, what is involved in sort of ripping out that authentication to adopt Passage? Um, well, to adopt Passage would simply be uh, embedding and instead of using all the code and support that you built in your own, building your own UI to do things like, uh, you know, t- uh, register users, get their username and password, and double their password, and make sure that they have a, you have a forget pa- forgot password link, and all the different things that go along with implementing that all yourself. Um, basically, we have a simple uh, uh, web element. You know, a, 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 I think it's the passage identifier auth and passage identifier uh, register, and all this passage identity register components that are very easy to embed in your system, in your HTML, and are very, very simple to run. They're totally customizable, so you can have them uh, match your look and feel in your website. And in the end, um, if you want to, as I said, we can you can migrate information about your users over to our system if you like. But the, the actual implementation of it is probably going to be more ripping the old one out rather than worrying about putting the new one in. Mm-hmm. And then who's your... You know, typical customer are these primarily you know startups or you know independent developers that are integrating this from scratch, or is this uh, you know a variety, I guess, like of size companies and maybe people even you know migrating existing systems? Sure, uh, it's probably at this point. I think it's a mix. Um, we're trying to 
we're certainly trying to target startups that are, you know, writing their first line of code and just want to, you know, hopefully our, our, one of our goals is to, you know, embed ourselves into those startups so that they're passwordless from the ground up. And then certainly uh, we're also looking at, you know, any website customer uh, that any website builder that has to authenticate users for their websites or their mobile applications. Uh, we specifically don't deal with things like internal network systems. Um, we leave that to the Octas of the world or Microsofts of the world. But uh, if you have a public-facing website or a public-facing application, uh, mobile application, then uh, we're we're interested in talking to mm-hmm. you. <laughs> and then, you know, with the, I guess the adoption of passwordless based on you know what you're seeing in the market. Has this been primarily for sort of B2C consumer-based applications or is it B2B or does it even matter? Well, ultimately it doesn't matter, but I I think probably the place you'll see it most is B2C because, again, improving that customer, that's the place we're looking at the most because big part of our value is in improving the customer experience on the other end. You know, the customer, again, who comes to the website very easily logs in using uh, Windows Hello or Face ID or you know the uh, uh, touch system on an, on an Android. Uh, that's the kind of customer. That's the kind of value we can add in really improving that customer experience for the websites out there. You know, our our dream customer would be a our dream user would be like a bank or uh, any you know anybody that uh, has some very valuable pieces of information hidden behind those. Uh, of the pass, you know, that password login authentication process. But anybody who needs to do authentication really can benefit. Right. Instabread is a great example, right? I mean, they they don't want to worry about it, but they don't also don't want people getting their uh, accounts hacked and, you know, sending free bread all over the world. <laughs> right. Know? Although that doesn't sound yeah. that bad, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you can't sort of underestimate the impact of like a lot of friction to log in. Like there's definitely been situations where I've Mm -hmm. abandoned a purchase because it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, like I can't, you know, it's been too long since I'm logged in the system. I don't know what my password is. Like I'll just go somewhere else where I'm, you know, already logged in and and I'll buy something. Like Mm -hmm. I would rather sometimes spend a little bit more for the convenience than have to remember, you know, some obscure, you know, login process. Yeah, exactly. That happens. I think, you know, studies show that happens about 30% of the Mm -hmm. time. That, a, that a, a cart is abandoned because somebody just went, forget it. I don't, I don't want to deal with this authentication scheme. Right. Yeah. So kind of looking ahead, you know, to the future in this space, what, what are your thoughts on the future of passwords and password security? Like how far away do you think we are from completely getting rid of passwords? Boy, that that's a tough question to answer. I, I, I think that's going to happen. I don't see passwords surviving in the long term. I guess I'm a firm believer that we always, what is it, uh, underestimate or overestimate technology in the short term and underestimate it in the long right. term. Yep. So I guess any estimation I give about when passwords are going away is probably too short, but it's probably going to happen longer term and in a more unusual and unique way than we probably think about now. Um, I think it's kind of inevitable. I, you know, one of the reasons I love working for passages is I really don't like the password process and I really feel good about advocating for a passwordless world. And so, uh, you know, I think that's kind of an inevitable thing that's coming down the pike. And, but when it's going to happen, I, I'm not that bra- I'm not brave enough to try and guess. Well, what's next for Passage? Is there things sort of, you know, on the future roadmap that you can share? Sure. Right now we're, uh, we're focusing a lot of attention on uh, uh, the Android and React SDKs, some other UI elements. Um, uh, Google and uh, uh, just... I think today or yesterday announced sort of their testing of their equivalent of Apple passkeys, you know, their passkey solution for their uh, ecosystem. So we're, uh, we're looking at that, going to, uh, uh, you know, implement that and make that happen so that, uh, you know, Android users, um, we recently released a beta SDK for our iOS solution. If you have an iOS app and you'd like to have password solutions integrated into that, we can do that and sh- uh, help you with that. And uh, we're looking more long-term at features-focused, uh, more enterprise customers, on more you know enterprisey type customers to allow for better user and app management, better user onboarding, things like that, that enable uh, larger accounts who have more specific needs than just logging somebody in and saying, yes, you're logged in. 
so yeah, we're you know we're we're a startup. We're working hard and making things happen very quickly. Awesome. Anything else that you'd like to share or you know point people towards? Sure. Uh, if you're interested in how a uh, passwordless solution can work for you, just go to passage.id forward slash demo, and uh, you can be registered using your uh, authentication system, you know, a biometric authentication system, probably in less than a minute. You can see it all working, and then we'll tell you all about how it works and everything like that. Um, love to have you stop by. If you want to uh, connect with me personally, you can go to passage.id forward slash Nick. And uh, you can fill out the form there, and maybe I'll send you a sticker or a T-shirt or something like Great. that. Great. I might uh, request a sticker <laughs> later today. Please do. Please do. I will, um, I'll yeah. include those links also in the in the show notes. So, Nick, thanks so much for Great. coming on the show. That was a lot of fun. You know, I dream oh, my for the day when I you know, we can dish passwords all together. few things, as I mentioned, make me more angry than trying to log into a website where I can't remember the password and I'm forced to go mm -hmm. through the reset process. I wish you and passage all the best even if it's you know for my own selfish needs uh you know i, I, hope, I hope there's you have success and cheers and thanks again you're very welcome thank you